In this video, we explore the basics of memory. Up to now, we have studied combinational logic. In combinational logic, the present output depends only on the present state of inputs. For combinational logic, we used truth tables, which relate to the output state to each possible input state. We now study circuits in which the present output state does not only depend on present inputs. Such circuits possess feedback, in which the outputs of a device are fed back to the input through the circuit. In such logic, called sequential logic, the present output depends on both present and past inputs. This logic is therefore said to incorporate memory of past events. The use of feedback tends to obscure the definitions of inputs and outputs. However, we maintain that inputs are parameters that can be changed outside the circuit, whereas outputs can only be changed within the circuit. It is often difficult to use a truth table to study sequential logic. In the example shown, if the input R is 1, then the outputs X and Y must both be 0. But if R is 0, the values of X and Y cannot be definitively determined. The tool that we use to study sequential circuits is called the state diagram. In this video, we will construct the complete state diagram involving all possible circuit states. In future application, we will use only partial state diagrams to study individual circuit operations. A circuit state consists of one possible combination of input and output values. Each state is represented by a circle, with the inputs at the top and the outputs at the bottom. In the complete state diagram, we will array all the possible states in a manner similar to the Carnot map. All possible combination of inputs will be arranged in rows, whereas all possible combinations of outputs will be arrayed in columns. We will use the same grey code ordering that was used in the Carnot map. The use of this ordering assumes that only one variable, input or output, will change at any given time. The dashed line reminds us that the only way to move up or down the diagram is by an external change of one of the inputs. Horizontal movements, on the other hand, will take place within the circuit itself. The state diagram shows the link between states. These links are imposed by the individual circuit devices. Consider first the NOR gate. This gate determines the relationship among the R, Y and X parameters. As an example, the R equals 0, X equal 1, Y equal 1 state is incompatible with this NOR relationship. For this reason, this state is called an unstable state. If the circuit were to enter this state, the NOR gate will force the X value to change from 1 to 0. This state transition is indicated by a curved clockwise arrow. The time taken for this transition is the propagation delay of the NOR gate. In this video, this is indicated by matching the color of the arrow to the color of the gate. We thus fill in all transitions that are forced by the NOR gate. As for the Carnot map, transitions may wrap around in the horizontal or vertical directions. We then do the same for the buffer. In the example shown, the buffer forces the Y value to transit from y is equal to 1 to y is equal to 0 after a propagation delay in the buffer. We thus fill in all transitions forced by the buffer. We now have all possible transitions forced by the devices within the circuit. We will now analyze the state diagram. Any state that is compatible with all devices is called a stable state. Usually, a circuit function is defined by its stable states. A stable state is indicated in the state diagram 
by a self-reflexing clockwise arrow. All other states are unstable states. A particular type of unstable state is one in which more than one transition is possible. The transition that occurs depends on which device propagation time is shorter. This situation is known as a race condition. Because of its inherent uncertainty, race conditions are excluded from the normal operation of a circuit. We now analyze the functions of the circuit obtained from the rows of the state diagram. In the R equal 1 row, the circuit will eventually settle in the X equals 0, Y equals 0 output state. This operation is called an output reset. In the R equals 0 row, there is no stable state. The circuit oscillates in a cyclic manner over the four possible states. The time or period of oscillation is equal to two delays of the NOR gate plus two delays of the buffer. The overall function of this circuit is described in the function table. R equal 1 forces an output reset. For R equal 0, oscillation occurs because X tracks the inverse of Y due to the NOR gate, whereas Y tracks the value of X due to the buffer.